Hi, here's Arndt von Königsmark, and uh, I would like to show you our news plugin, which is called the Key Optimizer. So, uh, whenever you have to deal with baked animations or any kind of animation with many, many keyframes, let's say imported motion capture data, for instance, um, it gets quite slow in the timeline to work with this uh, animation curves and um, you have really a um, difficult job to to edit this kind of animation. So um, the solution is quite simple. You have to get rid of keyframes, but on the other side, of course, you don't want to use uh, um, to lose the precision of your animation. So um, that's why we wrote this kind of plugin. So in this example, um, the first one I want to show you, we have an animated material. So what we see here when I start the animation, you can see that the uh, color on the surface of this cube uh, is changing and this uh, color change has been keyframed. So having a look at the timeline, you can see that this is the animation. These are the three animation curves for the RGB values of the color in the material. So this is quite a dense animation just to give us a basis some some base animations we can deal with so um, first step you do is you get the keyframe optimizer from the plugins menu and you can see this is just quite simple dialog this is um, already in a little bit older version um, the current version offers uh, a new button uh, over here, um, allowing you to add the objects or materials currently selected in the objects or material manager. Uh, in my version, um, I have to uh, take a snapshot of the timeline. Which this means that um, all the animations listed in the timeline get copied over to this uh, keyframe optimizer dialog here. So here on the left side, you can check or uncheck uh, the tracks we have in the timeline. So uh, you don't have, of course, or you don't want to reduce the keyframes in every track um, you have, maybe just in a few of them. So in here you can choose whatever track you like, like to optimize. And then basically that's all about the selection already. Um, then on the right side you see a precision value. So this one can be adjusted for every track. So you can, let's say, use uh, 0 0.1 for this one and then you can see you can use another value for the uh, green uh, animation track of this material here, for instance. Same is true for the uh, interpolation mode. So normally this will be uh, a spline anima animation, but you can also switch this over to be a linear or step interpolation. And then we have an intensity switch here uh, between low and high. Um, just to choose the chunk, so the, the amount of um, animation that is processed in one go. So this is more of a, a time um, part of the animation. So let's say the, the high value means that uh, you always have a look at two second chunks of the animation and the plugin tries to interpolate within this um, amount of time to get a sm smooth uh, curve there. So the higher the intensity, the longer the optimization could take, but also the more uh, precise or let's say uh, the less keyframes are possible. But this has to be um, tried out for uh, each type of animation you would like to um, optimize. So maybe there's a more or less smooth animation as we have it in our case, uh, where the values already show um, some curvy interpolation curves. Um, then the, the high mode is maybe the best. And when you have very rapid uh, changes in the values, maybe the lower intensity uh, could be better. So let's just start the uh, um, optimization by clicking on this optimize button. And you can see that um, 
we have the, the number of keyframes before, so this is the original keyframe count. And after that, we have the number of now optimized keys. So the fun part is that you can now play with uh, the precision value here. Let's say we pump it up to 0.5. Just try it again to see how this influences the uh, amount of keyframes we get. So opening the timeline again, you can see that you always have fully graphical feedback about what the animation curves will, look, uh, will uh, look like after the optimizations. And you can always go back to the original animation. So nothing gets lost. You can really play with the values for each and every track until you get the density of keyframes and the precision of the interpolation curves uh, you like to have. So what you can do is um, before you start to do your optimization to take a snapshot of the current original interpolation curves. And after that I would like to view this snapshot and then start the optimization. So let's do this again. And I zoom into it. And there you can see there's a black curve in between. So this is the original curve of the original animation. And you can see that even though we, in some cases, we get less than a fifth of the original key count, we're still quite close to what we got in the original curve. So um, this optimizer here, this algorithm behind it is quite clever. It's going back and forth through your animation and it's using tangents on the uh, new D placed keyframes, on the optimized keyframes, um, just to minimize really the amount of keyframes needed uh, to get about the same resulting animation curve or interpolation curve. Um, you can even pump up the precision. So precision basically means the uh, um, maximum uh, difference between the newly uh, placed keyframes and the original curve. But of course, um, it would not be just a flat line in the end. It's uh, really trying to be as close as possible, even with higher precision values, as you can see here. Um, it's going down and down and down even more with the um, amount of keyframes. And you can even uh, go above the precision one um, to smooth out a curve. So that's especially interesting maybe for motion capture data. Um, besides reducing the amount of keyframes even more, you can see that um, the interpolation curve now really smooths all the fine jiggering and maybe noise you have in your animation. So this is maybe um, a second benefit from this algorithm here. Um, not only to reduce the amount of keyframes, but also to really smooth out any animations. So this is just the first um, example I w wanted to show you. A second one I've prepared here in a separate scene. Uh, it's a typical motion capture setup. So you can see we have a skeleton here and some uh, motion capture data applied. So um, you already can see by clicking on the individual um, joints, um, maybe better to have a look at the timeline, uh, that we get quite a dense animation here. Uh, and not only for one object or material as with the last example, but with uh, a complex hierarchy um, of our character. So I like to reduce the amount of keyframes, of course. So what I'm doing here to really be able to compare not only the amount of keyframes, but also the, uh, the quality of the optimized um, animation, uh, I'm getting um, a copy of the original rig and I'm just renaming the hip joint to um, opt. 
So this will be the optimized hierarchy later, hopefully. So let's see what we can do when we head over to the keyframe optimizer and take a snapshot of the timeline. You can see here are our joints and going up a little bit and as I already mentioned this will be much easier with the current version as you can then just select these objects, these hierarchy and then you find a new button here to uh, just take the selected objects into the keyframe optimizer. But in this version I still have to select what I really would like to optimize. So I start here with my hips joint and go down the hierarchy using the shift key. Um, and doing a right click to tell the plugin to activate the selected tracks. So everything that has not been selected, as you can see here, um, gets or is, remains untouched. So, so we are able to really compare both animations later. So uh, what we can do now is to compare the pure amount of keyframes before and after the optimization. So I'm just starting the optimize. You can see this is quite fast because it's fully uh, multi-threaded and you can see the amount goes really down quite a bit. So I'm even trying to increase um, the optimization. Just doing this again. You can see it's even going, going down more. Um, but this is not the, the only thing interesting for us because we most of the time want to keep the animation as uh, original as possible. So let's see what we have here. If I just move over the uh, optimized version of the uh, rig and start playing the animation so we can see them side by side. And you can see that um, there is no really an obvious difference between them now, even though you can see that the amount of keyframes has been reduced quite a bit. And um, even if you spot some um, motions you would like to get rid of that is maybe too smooth or uh, too much off compared to the original, you can always go back to the one track or to the one joint um, that's not really what you expected and then start the optimization again just for this one element, maybe with a little bit um, smaller precision values. So this is just the first presentation I wanted to give to you to give uh, or to get an idea about what this plugin can do. I think it's quite a valuable helper for everyone dealing with uh, really heavy animations or baked animations. Thanks for watching.